love to explore the people and stories that make our community vibrant and connected in every issue. And our May-June Best of Roanoke issue is no exception as we shared more about the amazing sister cities of Roanoke. Today's special guest is Mary Jo Fossier, the president of Roanoke Valley Sister Cities. For decades, Roanoke Valley Sister Cities has been fostering international relationships and cultural exchanges that bridge the gap between our community and the world. Mary Jo, who joined the organization in the 1990s and has led since multiple delegations abroad, brings a wealth of experience and passion to her role. Under her leadership, the organization continues to build lasting friendships and expand its global reach. And today, we learn more about the fascinating world of sister cities and how it impacts international connections on our local community. Welcome, Mary Jo. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here and taking the time. Mm -hmm. Curious about, you have such a wonderful resume, so we'll go into that in just a few minutes right. because it really blends in well with sort of what motivated you to become part of this organization. Mm -hmm. Could you share a little bit more about the inspiration behind that? Well, it started in the, as you said, in the 1990s, mm -hmm. and I was teaching French at William Fleming High School and happened to see in the newspaper an article that talked about starting a sister city in St. Lo, Normandy. And as a French teacher, I thought, well, that would be a good connection. Advantageous, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to the meeting and, of course, got on the committee immediately, and then uh, everything snowballed mm -hmm. from that event so well that's wonderful so again you were a, a public school teacher for Roanoke City Public Schools 1979 mm -hmm. 2015 my yes. husband's a teacher too I thank ever all of you for your service <laughs> you. and so you were chairman of the St. Louis Sister Cities from 2004 to 2015 mm -hmm. um, and that's a really that must have been a really special experience being able to sort of talk to your students about what that means and how mm -hmm. to you know broaden your international relations with people Yes, yes, it was. And that it got them excited, especially the ones who were able to travel. And we fundraise and fundraise mm -hmm. to help pay for part of the trip. And the students who couldn't go would even help us fundraise because they were excited for the connection. Sure. And we also did uh, a pen pal connection mm -hmm. uh, with the students at a high school in St. Lo and my students at William Fleming. And is St. Lo your favorite city in the world or...? Well, probably not my favorite city <laughs> in the world, but it's one that's close to my heart. Naturally, of course. Assuming mm -hmm. Roanoke is your favorite place in the whole world, obviously. <laughs> and so you've traveled widely in Europe. You've led five Roanoke Sister City delegations to France. And in 2014, and this is pretty exciting, in 2014, April, Mary Jo was recognized by the French government for promoting the French language and culture, and you were named a Knight in the Order of Academic Palms <laughs> by the French government. What yes. does that mean for people who don't necessarily know what that is? <laughs> Well, it's, it has to do, it's called the Palms Académique, and it has to do with my involvement with the French culture um, in this area or elsewhere, and of course with the connection with sister cities and other uh, incentives that I took charge of and uh, the trips and all of that and my other affiliations. Um, I was chosen. <laughs> a wonderful recognition, to be yes. sure. Mm -hmm. And so you've mentioned in our in our feature from our May-June article, you've mentioned that the organization fosters long-lasting friendships. And mm -hmm. so, of course, you've mentioned the pen pals and things like that. Mm -hmm. Are there any other maybe examples of how those cultural exchanges have positively impacted your participants or even the community at large? And one in mind might be last week's special delegate who came right. to visit. <laughs> right. So last weekend, we had a delegation of around 26 people from Wanju, South Korea. And um, as soon as they got off the plane, uh, some of them had never been here, but some had friends here. Mm -hmm. So there were hugs and, you know, handshaking. And yeah, it looks like a party at the airport while right. welcoming committee. That was really exciting. <laughs> right, right. And even if we they didn't know anyone, we made friends. Um, and the dancers that were here were... Um, beautiful example of their cultural exchange that we do. They had two troops of dancers mm -hmm. come, so that was phenomenal. That's a lot of people just yeah. excited to be part of that. Yeah. yeah, and it was so good. We we zoomed a lot to prepare this, mm -hmm. so it was so good to meet the person with whom we were zooming, who ended up being one of the translators for mm -hmm. the group. Um, and she was excellent in translating. <laughs> and I believe, was this the same group that ended up at Roanoke College as well? Yes, yes. They took a tour. Uh, Dr. Stella Shu took them on a tour of Roanoke College, and um, there was a student who attended Roanoke College who was from South Korea and Wanju, and uh, so
so they learned about that if they didn't know before. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that's really wonderful. It means that those longstanding relationships are lasting for generations, not just, Mm -hmm. you know, a particular decade. And so some of the recent initiatives or projects that Roanoke Valley Sister Cities has been involved in, I'm sure that there are many that you could name. Specifically, Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about this past weekend's Local Colors Festival and the participation and, you know, cultural exchange you're able to have there. Yes, it's it's a wonderful event because uh, we are there, uh, representatives from sister cities, and we're able to talk personally to people. So that makes it very special. Um, beyond that, we also do the uh, Ginkgo Festival, which we created two years ago in Century Plaza. Mm-hmm. And we have reps for all of our sister cities there, and we also partners with the tree uh, specialist of Roanoke mm-hmm. to talk about the ginkgo trees. One of the most beautiful se- festival settings you can possibly yes. have in the fall with all those gorgeous yes. colors. <laughs> yes. And uh, we also have an art table. Mm-hmm. Um, artist Catherine Devine heads that table for us and involves the community and the children who mm-hmm. come by um, to make things with ginkgo leaves or to do coloring pages. Um, and we also do um, outreach with the Master Gardeners mm-hmm. uh, last time, and that worked out really well. Excellent. And also, this is a little self-serving, but some of the music actually was played by my husband. Oh, yes. <laughs> so he was out there playing and said what a great event it was for the last couple of years. Yes. And it's really great to see the kids having so much fun and, and quite frankly, learning about other cultures right. because they might not get that elsewhere outside of the and school. And there's probably not another type of fall festival in the beginning of November. So right. we chose that especially because of the leaves. I think it's perfect. The <laughs> it's the yeah. perfect. All those golden colors are wonderful. Yes. Are there any other maybe initiatives or projects that have helped contribute to this international understanding in our community? Yes. At the Taubman, there's the Lunar Festival, mm-hmm. uh, New Year Festival, and we participate in that each year the with a calligraphy so table gorgeous. and last year we also had a little dance troupe mm-hmm. that performed um, one of our members uh, daughters uh, and some friends of hers um, it was a beautiful piece that mm-hmm. they performed and um we also do the Roanoke Arts Pop Festival at the Taubman. We like to be present where we can mm-hmm. at different events so that uh, our message is spread, not just uh, during local colors, mm-hmm. but during other times. Well, yes. and, and obviously with my job, I'm partial because I get to see a lot of what you're doing throughout the year. And so yeah. I love that readers mm-hmm. and listeners now are going to be able to see you <laughs> and recognize it. Oh, that's Sister Cities. Right. And so do you mind sharing a little bit more about the other cities that we're connected to? Uh, Yes. So, first of all, there was Wanju in Mm -hmm. 1964, and that was followed by Kasumu, Kenya. And we keep a close connection with that. In fact, our chairman, uh, Bill Modica, was on a roundtable this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Nice timing. (laughs) (laughs) With the Kenyan uh, group for Sister Cities International. And he has headed an incentive to start a uh, water filtration uh, system in a village school near huh. Kisumu. And so that is up and running. And so we'll see what the next project is. Um, after that, we have sister cities. Uh, one was Skoff, Russia, which is now on pause because of the Ukrainian conflict. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are very close to the Ukrainian uh, community mm-hmm. here in Roanoke. So we'll, we're pausing that for right now. Sure. And uh, there is also Florianopolis, Brazil. And last fall uh, in September, we had a muralist come from Florianopolis, Mm -hmm. and he did a mural downtown Roanoke on Campbell Avenue. And then he partnered with Jonathan Mural, uh, who's the muralist for Roanoke City, and they did one on 11th and Mormon Mm -hmm. Street, uh, which was a a beautiful mural. I remember him talking about that. And, And in addition, I mean, John specifically talked about the ability to learn from other artists especially yes. ones who are outside of our own community right um, because he collaborates and networks and talks to so many wonderful artists but mm-hmm. to have someone from a whole nother country you know coming mm-hmm. in and sharing sort of his medium or experience right. that's that's really important for just John's own personal growth or another right. artist so that's pretty exciting right. and people met Tiago because uh, mm-hmm. we had a reception at the Wilson Hughes
Women's Gallery, um, and this was partially uh, financed by Rona College, so we thank them very much uh -huh. for <laughs> helping us to bring this <laughs> artist you, here. <laughs> yes, um, And we also uh, have other sister cities. Let's see what I have uh, left out. Apoli, Poland, mm -hmm. um, which was about the same time as uh, Florianopolis, and that is a very active um, sister city also. We do um, music and artistic exchanges with them, and we're looking forward to the fall uh, of this year with a delegation coming here to Roanoke from Apoli, Poland. Exciting. Yes, and they will be, um, I think, housed at Roanoke College. Mm -hmm. I think Roanoke College has once again stepped up <laughs> and, <you> again. <laughs> and helped out uh, with that. So we're, we're excited with that. And Apoli, Poland is um, twinned with uh, Roanoke County. Mm -hmm. So that is not a Roanoke City sister city sure but, but that, still wonderful but that's great yeah so absolutely. they're under our umbrella mm -hmm. though yeah how do you how does that um it seems like such a broad question like how do you become a sister city how does that even where does that start uh, that starts with uh interest in the community mm -hmm. And uh, it could also be somebody who is from the country, mm -hmm. but we like to have a committee formed outside of sister cities that, that they come to us. Mm -hmm. So it can't just be one person. Hey, I'd like to start a sister I just city. Go to New Zealand, I can't right. like become <laughs> the delegate for that. Okay, <laughs> right. And so then that has to be approved by Sister Cities International, and then also a local government. Okay. So it's not something that we want to sponsor are on our own because mm -hmm. we're a nonprofit. So uh, it's either Roanoke City, Roanoke County, or possibly Salem in the future mm -hmm. would have a sister city. So that's, and then they have to have a certain amount of funding that they raise mm -hmm. um, to begin their relationship with the sister city. That's so interesting, though, yeah. that it really stems from somebody's passion from, from either being from that country or the interest in it and sort of right. seeing how that comes together. Yes. That's really neat. Yeah. I, and so in thinking about, um, again, sort of a sort of a broad question, and you kind of touched on it in the very beginning, but why is it so important for us to have sister cities? I mean, yeah. this is, it seems obvious, right, that we want to introduce mm -hmm. international relations and, and culture, but why do you really think, getting in, into the heart of it, why mm -hmm. is it so important to our community to have that option? Because it's a people-to-people -people organization, so we're not depending on the U.S. government mm -hmm. to, you know, provide diplomacy we are doing the diplomacy we are making friends and we are our mission of course is to um, spread peace throughout the world and even if there are conflicts um, we don't ignore our sister cities right now as i said scoff is on pause because um, between their government and our government, things are not going on. Right. But we hope and pray that eventually there will be um, a, a reconvening of that resolution really. of some yes. sort. And mm -hmm. it, I mean, again, I not to not to put you on the spot, but you, certainly there are challenges when it comes to things like that. I mean, yes. what does that mean for? I mean, you've talked about things are on pause, so mm -hmm. you know that means that nothing is moving forward until a resolution is found. Yes. Um, but you know, how do you, as a sister city, as a as a host to some, how do you deal with that? I mean, I know that's sort of a broad question, but mm -hmm. it's interesting the challenges that you face mm -hmm. when you might not necessarily expect them because who could predict that situation? Right. Um, when that happened, we were uh, encouraged um, by the government of Virginia to sever the ties mm -hmm. and just cut them off and say, we don't want you anymore. Um, but I decided to take another stance in the whole Roanoke Valley Sister Cities Board, and we said we're going to put it on pause because we're going to hope for peace mm -hmm. in the future and that the exchanges that we had, we had student exchanges and we were talking about doing art exchanges. Uh, we hope that that can resume. Right. And certainly we, we do hope that. Um, and so going to a little bit more upbeat, but mm -hmm. artistic and educational exchanges that you've just mentioned, they are obviously a significant part of the activities. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious about how those exchanges enhance the relationships between Roanoke and the sister cities. You mentioned, you know, exchange students, I mean, and, and our students going over to other countries. So that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty exciting if you're part of that experience. Yes, yes. Um, and... 
through culture, through whether it's music, whether it's art, it's an international language. Mm-hmm. So even if they can't commun- always communicate um, in English or in the language of the target country, we can communicate with our love for the arts. Um, so I think that's a major part of our mission. Mm-hmm. And also we have medical exchanges. So we partner with Virginia Tech Carilion School of Medicine, mm-hmm. and they um, have uh, set up a system in which their medical students in the last year of medical school are able to go to four of our sister cities, plus some other cities that they have put under their umbrella. And um, we most recently had a medical student from Wanju in January who came here, and we had two medical students from Virginia Tech Korean School of Medicine who went to a poly, mm-hmm. Poland, or just one, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> yeah, two that went to Wanju and one that went to a poly, mm-hmm. yes. And that wa- was a great success. And they learn medical techniques and That's e- so interesting. from each other. You've mentioned you know? arts and culture, which is very important too. But mm-hmm. like you said, for them in, in healthcare and medical to learn from each other, I mean, that's a really important conversation to have, obviously. Right, right. So that's part of, <clears throat> excuse me, that's part of our mission mm-hmm. um, is to um, provide exchanges not only with the arts and culture, but also with the medical. Right. Um, and to involve the other organizations. I mean, this is yes. this is no small thing. This mm-hmm. is a pretty, this is much, much bigger than I think many people would understand until they start learning right. about these details. Right. Yeah, that's so interesting. And, and are you from Roanoke or... Uh, originally, no, from okay. the Midwest. All right, but you've been here for you know a little while anyway. Yes. yes. And, okay, and so that must be pretty exciting to be able to take what you've learned to from other countries and to bring it again to your students as a former teacher, mm-hmm. um, you know, and to have to be able to share those experiences. What was it like to be able to see your kids and your students sort of get it, you know, to understand the purpose of why you're doing this kind of exchange, why you're teaching them other culture. Right. Uh, It was a wonderful experience, I will say. I took five trips, and each one was a little bit different. And um, even on one trip, we took a group of my students who were also part of um, the arts and dance group at William Fleming. And my daughter, who is a dancer, uh, at that time she was at Cornell, and she came down and, well, she went on the trip also, but she choreographed a piece for them to dance in the theater there. And several other of the students were musicians, um, so they performed. So we did a night of performance in St. Lo. Um, How beautiful! On that I mean, trip. no one else is getting that experience. You right, know, that's right. so exciting. And and of course, the the importance of, um, you know, my husband and I always joke that we we. We travel not pretty infrequently, but Mm -hmm. when we do, we're talking about traveling across the country and seeing all the things that the U.S. has to offer. But obviously, this world is so big. I mean, Mm -hmm. there are so many things to see. So to have seven sister cities so far, uh, that's pretty exciting. (laughs) I mean, you know, there's only more to come, I think, I would think. And so looking ahead, do you have hopes or goals for the future of Roanoke Valley sister cities? Um, Well... We do, but I kind of take it one day at a time, (laughs) actually. Um, We have talked with the Ukrainian committee, and they are very much um, in hope that we will have a sister city with Ukraine. So Mm -hmm. that is a possibility. I've been approached for a Hispanic sister city, and I would love to do that as well. But we need to have a serious committee Mm -hmm. approach us, and uh, we would go from there. And there also needs to be with other new sister cities, uh, as there are with the ones that we have, mm-hmm. a, a kind of relationship, mm-hmm. uh, whether it be historical, like with the D-Day for St. Lo, mm-hmm. France, whether it be uh, a missionary, that was how it started with Wanju, medical missionary, so each one has to have their own connection. And I failed to mention about Li Jiang China. We got off on another tangent <laughs> there. That's all right. And um, that sister city was started by Pearl Fu, mm-hmm. whom many people might know who are from Roanoke. A champion of local colors, yes. formerly. <laughs> and she was from Yunnan province. So Pearl uh, put her heart and soul into that, into local colors. 
and we have a very active relationship with them. In fact, tomorrow I have a Zoom with Lee Jang at nine in the morning. So yeah, well, whatever time it's going to be there. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Do you ever wake up and wonder, okay, what time is it where I need to talk to them? <laughs> right, right. You must have a bunch of clocks at your house to keep track of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and so as far as the organization itself, do you have any thoughts on maybe how that might evolve in coming years? Um, I'm not quite sure, yeah, actually, we'll to tell goes. you how it will evolve. Uh, just to get even more and more involved in the community. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was my goal when I took over the presidency in 2015, was to involve us in more than local colors. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were doing the Lunar New Year, but I wanted more things. And I also have gone into schools and have given presentations, as other members have as mm-hmm. well. Well, one of my very best friends from high school, she went to France in her high school year, and then Mm -hmm. she ended up becoming a world traveler. She's been teaching in all sorts of countries, Mm -hmm. and she's in L.A. now. And it's just to hear her adventures is really inspiring and something. Mm -hmm. And for her to be able to bring that back to her students now as a teacher um, and to share with them her experiences. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's just another wonderful way of incorporating our new generations into that thinking. (laughs) I will say when I have taken the groups before, I will ask them, what was your favorite part of the trip. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they will mention Paris because they saw things in Paris, but they said, Madame, probably the best was meeting the other students with whom we were housed because mm-hmm. we did homestays uh, for a week. And, and that was something they'll never forget. And many of them keep in contact with those host families up to this day. That's wonderful. And mm-hmm. it's so, it must be very rewarding for you and, and for your students to understand that no, nobody's a stereotype, right? right? You see things on TV or in cartoons <laughs> or whatever, and you think it's a certain way. Mm-hmm. And it, it isn't, you know, people right. are much warmer than you make them out to be or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So that's very interesting that you're offering them that opportunity. Yes. And when we visit these countries, they roll the red carpet out. <laughs> I mean, you are you are a special person like you were some kind of State Department diplomat or <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love that. That's which we should all feel like every day. <laughs> and so um, in pulling it back, we've talked about international, but let's talk mm-hmm. about your home here, Roanoke. Right. And so where are you, where do you love to eat, actually, is I think my first question, because, you know, a lot of people might mention Williamson Road for the international flavors on there. Mm-hmm. Do you do you seek out French pastry whenever you're in town and, you know, can find it? Mm-hmm. From time to time. <laughs> we, but we like to try uh, foreign restaurants, mm-hmm. definitely. Um, I won't mention any one specific, but we will. We are we frequent them. Yes, right. seems to be a <laughs> specific goal you should have, right? Yes. <laughs> and then, how about um, you know playing or going in our region in your spare time when you're not busy with sister cities? Uh, what are you doing? Hopefully, you're relaxing a little bit with family or friends, or mm-hmm. you know any special activities that you really enjoy. Well, we're we often go to the Taubman mm-hmm. because um, we're very much art buff so i say we because my husband is pierre and he is french and not surprised by that (laughs) (laughs) and um other museums that we visit um we like to go walking and that's there's plenty of places to go walking here in the valley yes for sure yes maybe not as beautiful as the eiffel tower but still just as beautiful in its own own special way right (laughs) And plays and um, very much plays. We enjoy that and, and musicals and. Well, I think it's lovely that you're you've maintained home here because yes. you know there are many arts and culture opportunities here in our mm-hmm. region without having to leave the space, and so I think it's wonderful mm-hmm. that you're representing those as well. Yes, definitely. Yes. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like leader, uh, listeners or readers to know, whether about sister cities or upcoming things, anything, maybe how to get involved too? Certainly. Mm-hmm. Well, we have a website, mm-hmm. um, so you can connect with us, and that's uh, www.rvs. CI.us. Mm-hmm. And we'll list it on our website for listeners who maybe didn't catch that, or I'm going to spell it out three times. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And also um, on the website, uh, you can learn more about each uh, city, who is on our board, um, some donors who participate, mm-hmm. as well as we have other members as well, and uh, our mission statement, our goals, and we have a Facebook page as well. Mm-hmm. So we try to reach out to the community in that way. We're going to have an uh, annual dinner uh, June the 4th 
and anyone in the community is welcome to come to that dinner and you can uh, reserve a seat there on the website at the RSVP at the top the tab and uh, we're going to do that at Rona College this year last year we did it at Center in the Square on the rooftop mm-hmm. but now that's a restaurant <laughs> So we returning to Rono yeah, College. That's right. Lots of wonderful spaces to be able to do yes. that. And I love your inclusivity, that everyone's welcome, mm-hmm. uh, especially in our community. Even if you don't have a connection to a sister city, that you're still welcome to yes. be part of the organization and yes. its goals. And and you will learn. I'll do a, a, a PowerPoint that evening to explain. And also um, Dr. Ramona Kirsch, who is um, – the chairman for Juan Ju will be doing a presentation about this wonderful exchange that we just had with Juan Ju. So, um, yes, I, I we'll hope. see you there. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time uh-huh. today and for joining us. And thank you for allowing us and for readers a little peek into Sister Cities. You're obviously doing so much more than can fit into a thousand words on paper, but certainly <laughs> thank you for your efforts. It's amazing what you're doing for thank and you. in our community. Thank you. And we also welcome students who are interested in doing internships in the country. Great. So um, we will be sending, I think, um, I forget how many to St. Lowe this summer, um, and we're receiving also. Uh, and we're also um, in relation with Holland University, mm-hmm. and they will be sending, I believe, three young women to St. Lowe Fantastic. this summer. Well, uh-huh. that's that's amazing. Well, thank you again, Mary Jo Fossey, mm-hmm. the president of Roanoke Valley Sister Cities, again, for the work you're doing in our community and sharing more about the power mm-hmm. of international connections and cultural exchanges in our region. Thank mm-hmm. you truly for your time today. It is so inspiring to hear about the impactful work being done to foster global friendships and enrich our local community. If you're interested in learning more or getting involved, we'll list it on our website, but you can please be sure to visit the Roanoke Valley Sister Cities website at rvsci.us. We encourage listeners and readers to continue exploring, connecting, and embracing the diverse world around us. You can read the Sister Cities feature in our May-June Best of Roanoke feature and so much more in our latest issue on newsstands now or read on at theroanoker.com.